Man, we did the promos again. And this time they were nuts. So when the Bullet Club were here, Juice Robinson sounded like some kind of wizard from a 1990s computer game. And then Ricky Starks pulled up in his car. And I was like, what's the cameraman doing? Just stood there waiting? That's really weird and possibly illegal. I really do enjoy them though, because they make you feel so damn nostalgic deep down in your tum tum. And given that we do keep doing them, let's make sure we keep doing them. Also, hello, my friends. Happy new wrestling week to you, who the flood knows what the next seven days hold. But I can tell you what's going to happen on this Monday morning. We're taking the finger of power. And we're giving the good bits an up and the bad bits are down for AEW Collision, which for my money so far has been a pretty damn good wrestling show. Speaking of Starks too, when he did pop out that vehicle, he had his Owen Hart Cup tournament title thingamajig. So he came out to the ring to do the opening show Raw promo. I meant collision. Collision. AEW definitely has no pyro budget left now either, because we set off so many fireworks here, it kind of felt like it was a mistake. And given that Tony Schiavone was on questioning duty, and I suppose running out of time, he was just like, oh, look who it is, Ricky Starks. Why did you do what you did last week, you goober? You cheated. Now, he didn't actually say goober, because very sadly, we don't live in that land. But Ricky did start showing off his Louis Vuitton bag that he had bought with his Owen Cup tournament winnings. He then did that thing when he was like, I don't need to give you a reason. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes you do. Otherwise, you may as well say anything or an elephant told me to do it. Now look, he is meant to be a bad guy now, so I suppose it does tie in. But then like Britney Spears, he did it again. Because Tony was like, all right, well at least tell us why you mugged off Juice and Thunder Liger. And he wouldn't do that either. Damn it. He did launch into his big speech saying, man, I don't care for this four pillars name because I wouldn't even want to be a pillar, even though I'm not a pillar, because let's look at all the pillars. Have they ever won the Owen Hart Cup tournament? No, no, they have not. It's true. This is when CM Punk just walked out, which I really enjoyed because I love wrestling tropes. I think wrestling tropes are the best thing ever. But it is a bit silly <laughs> that there would be an audio guy waiting to push play and the wrestler turns up and goes, do it now, do it now. Whereas Punk, he just wanted to talk to this guy. CM also actually admitted he was quite proud of Stark, because look, I get that you cheated and I've cheated before. And for those keeping track and maybe making notes, yes, CM Punk got booed a lot. But again, does it matter? Not really. Now his big question was that he could take the fact that he lost because of a cheater, but how is Ricky going to look in the mirror? Because he knows he is the one who was cheating. Then, just as CM Punk was about to leave, Ricky Starks was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, get your ass back here. And the reason he did do that is because he showed off his bag again, and he was like, I tell you, this is as empty as that red one you were carrying around, which was like an undershot. He was saying that CM Punk ain't actually a champion. This really annoyed Punk too, who came back and said, ah, oh, you're just like little MJF, because you know I'm the real world's champion, and he knows I'm the real world's champion, so damn it, I'm the real world's champion. It's like being in 1992 again. This thing got absolutely crazy because Luchasaurus and Christian Cage walked out. And do you know what the first thing Christian said was? Look at you, CM Punk. Who would say that they owned a title when they didn't own a title? And of course, he was wearing the TNT Championship. Christian Cage turns 50 next year. And right now, he could be better than ever. I mean it. He also kept calling him and his dinosaur friends the TNT champion as if they were together and said that he would like to get out of New Jersey very quickly because he hates it and they're only contractually obliged to be here. Obviously, everybody went boo. Darby Allen then must have been in the back board because he walked out too and he's like, look man, I agree with you. I hate this four pillars nonsense too, but I tell you who else I dislike, Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and maybe you, Ricky Starks. But actually, I quite like Punk. Why don't we do a tag team match? I do also want to point out that during this, Darby also insinuated that Luchasaurus wasn't a dinosaur. Now, I thought that was disgusting. Do you not think these dinos haven't been through enough? Darby Allen, I mean, all his friends and family were wiped off this planet years and years ago. You should wash your mouth out with soap. Now, look, yes, maybe this went a little bit long and it was pure sports entertainment, which I have no problem with because it also set up our main event. CM Punk and Darby Allen taking on Christian Cage and Ricky Starks. And I surveyed the situation and I thought, yeah, that's something I want to see. I'll stay tuned. Giving it up. But then saw Andrade getting kicked out of the building because later on we are going to get the House of Black versus the Acclaimed. And everybody had decided, well, we can't trust this man. He's absolutely crazy. So, yeah. They made him leave. I was like, that's not very nice at all. Now, it looked like he left, and I was like, oh man, this is wrestling. I bet he comes back. But actually, he didn't. 
when we got the most random tag team match. Because it was Juice Robinson and Jay White taking on Action Andretti and Darius Martin. But here's the thing, and why Collision has become such a good show. We have used Saturday nights to make Bullet Club Gold one of the best tag teams on the planet. And Jay White especially is going, <laughs> remember me, I'm a top tier talent. And if you have been watching Ring of Honor, you know that Action and Darius... Well, they're a damn good tag team. Modern Action basically flipped and dipped around the place too and also hit this corkscrew moonsault. And I was like, man, that is ridiculous. When Jay White once again proved that he's so good because he just tagged in and he started beating everybody up. He ain't dealing with this nonsense. As the guns are out with their brand new friends, the crowd started to chant, your daddy doesn't love you, which I thought was very mean when Darius got the hot tag. And if you can believe it, he ran wild. He did this awesome DDT death drop thingamajig when he hit this picture perfect crossbody. This is when action, much like Darby Allen earlier, was like, man, I want to get involved. So he did this Arabian press to the outside. These guys are totally nuts. Robinson then saw he was going for a split leg moonsault, so he stopped that. And he put him in the tree of woe position. I was like, man, we've all got to calm down. No tree wants to be woeful. He also used that to ruin action with the pendulum DDT when White just went, pam, I'm back now. And he hit the Blade Runner one, two, three. And I thought this was a very entertaining match. And again, this Juice Robinson, Jay White combo kind of feel like we should push them to the moon giving it up. Austin and Colton also got in there and threw Dar from the ring, Darius and Action, because of course they are now Bullet Club Gold. So again, this faction could go far. I'm going to keep my eye on it. AEW then made sure to shout out Willow Nightingale because she was the female winner of the Owen Hart Cup tournament. And we talked about the fact that Athena and her had an amazing match at the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. And honestly, I've seen that thing. You need to go out of your way to see it too. It is genuinely one of the matches of the year, which is saying something in 2023, because we've had a lot of them. When all of a sudden, my two worlds came together. Wow. Because if you've watched before, you know that I love Miro. I think Miro is the greatest man to ever walk this earth. And if we could give him every single championship and every single promotion, I would back it. He was also facing Nick Comoroto, though, who is a dude that in the past on social media has thrown insults at me because I don't have much hair. Now, I've always assumed this is because he is super duper hairy. That's neither here nor there. And also take the big men slapping man meat box. And actually, Nick had a plan here. Well, why don't I attack Miro during his entrance? Maybe, just maybe, I can sneak the win. The problem was, though, I think Kamarai only had one thing to do after this, which was corner splash and then a corner splash. And I'll do a corner splash. And eventually, Miro got bored of being corner splash. So he kicked him. He whipped off his top. Game over submission. And he won. Tap out victory. Now, I am a little bit confused because last week Miro was all like, oh man, I'm going to take on someone that you fans have wanted me to see whip for ages. And no disrespect to Nick Comorato, but I don't think it's him. So I guess, yeah, here's another one we have to wait and see. But I've already explained how much I do love this man. He is getting up. And then I had a quick reminder how good FTR, the AEW World Tag Team Champions, have been recently. And they shall be on the show soon when it was time for the trios championship match. Huh. But there was actually a lot to this, because the start is it was the House of Black taking on the acclaim, so the fans loved it, but we were also going crazy with story here, so you were able to dive in. Also though, rather than do the whole back and forth stretch, which is what I presume we would do, this didn't go as long as I was expecting, and yeah, had kind of an abrupt end. But all things considered, I do believe it was the way to go. Max Caster also took a shot of Buddy Matthews during his opening rap. And this was basically insinuating that maybe something was going on between Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio. So once again, those two were smashing it. And then he just started to kick everybody's ass. He was an angry Australian. He soon broke down two Buddy and Max going at it in the ring. When Brody King decided, oh, hey, Anthony Bowens, hey, Billy Gunn, and hello, Barry Barricade. Why don't I just crush all of you together? So we did. So yeah, bring it down. The justice for Barry counter goes up to 88, so we're 12 away from his funeral. And obviously, as we are here with Brody King, he's responsible for like 68 of these. I don't think he likes bears at all. But they got some dirty dom chants. And I was like, man, how is this guy so over? I totally love it. When King then decided, well, I've already dealt with Barry Barricade. Now I'm going to deal with you, Billy Gunn. <laughs> and just started punching him in the face. This king is really good. He did allow Caster to tag Gunn in properly because he wanted some of his. And even though this was technically the hot tag, do you know what Brody King did? He just murdered him with a lariat. To the point I started arranging his funeral. It was so devastating too, Malachi Black was then here. 
Yes, he shaved off his beard, which did look a little bit strange just because we're not used to it. He hit the black mass and Billy Gunn got pinned, even though the last time we saw him talk, he said he wasn't going to fall into this anymore. Rut row. Black also said something to Billy after this, which must have totally wrecked him, because Gunn then took his boots off and he left them in the ring and he kind of barged past the acclaimed. And obviously the idea here was that maybe, just maybe, he's retired. My gosh. So I'm just going to assume that this is part of the tale, because again, Max Caster and Anthony Bowens had the whole, oh my gosh, I can't believe it face. But I like this load. It does tie into the fact that Billy Gunn feels like he's holding his new friends down and that they need to fly. So this is just a really cool feud that we have come up with. And now we can tell it on Saturday nights, we can tell it on Wednesday nights, we can tell it on Friday nights. We can also do strange things with our hands. Also, the House of Black are now the longest reigning trios champions in AEW history. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Up. AEW then reminded you that it was Darby Allen who won the Raw Rampage on Friday night, so he is now officially the number one contender for Luchasaurus' TNT title. Probably should have played this video before that opening segment, but don't worry about that, because here came FTR. And they started to talk about a lot of teams they still have beef with, such as the Young Bucks, the Acclaimed, and Aussie Open, and we should do all of those matches. But they can't worry about it right now, because the brand new number one contenders are Adam Cole and MJF. They don't like this at all. And this is for two reasons as well, because one, nobody should be trusting Max, and FTR know all about that after the pinnacle thing. But also, two, they've been watching their matches, and these two think the tag team division is all comedy. And that is not how Cash and Dax see it. Harwood also told this amazing story from when he was younger, when his dad said, listen, boy, you're going to have to get a job, when all the well-off kids were like, ha, ha, look at this absolute nerd. He has to earn his money. From that day, he was like, one day I shall get my revenge. And given that MJF was born with a silver spoon up his ass, well, now the opportunity has presented itself. So he is basically using these little shits as inspiration to try and make this match something. And I tell you, there are multiple directions we could head here, because if you don't know, Adam Cole and MJF are a team, are totally busting the bank. Their brand new t-shirt is one of the best selling of the year. So maybe, just maybe, you could call an audible and have them become the champions and hold off their breakup for just a bit longer. I mean, that's what I should do. It is an absolute treat. And now I'm even more intrigued about it than I would be otherwise. Giving it up. When Ty Valkyrie beat Sky Blue. Hmm. Now look, this did actually have quite a good story behind it because we were told that Sky Blue grew up watching Ty Valkyrie. So now it was like, oh my gosh, I get to fight my hero. When you look at their more recent histories, Sky has actually been winning a little bit and is on momentum. Whereas Tyre, well, not so much. I mean, her loss record has been so bad. When she had that title shot recently, everybody was like, why? That is the past, though, so don't worry about it. And there was a great bit when Valkyrie just tapped Sky on the head like, ha ha, you're nothing to me. When Blue looked at her and said, well, damn it, I think I'm somebody. And she kicked her ass. Well, she tried to. They kind of chopped each other a little bit. And then Sky tried to outpower Tyre. Surprise, surprise, it didn't work. What were you thinking? Valkyrie also hit a spear on the floor, so this was brutal. And she also hit the least devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the Blue Thunderbomb. One, two, kick out, because of course, it never beats anyone. Blue was soon back with a big old knee when she hit a crossbody for a one, two, R, where she decided it's time to pay homage to my other hero in my life, James Bond, and she went for Skyfall, Ty said, nope, you ain't doing that. She reversed it. She hit the big stomp and she got the three. I didn't see it coming. I did actually quite enjoy this. I thought it was pretty damn fun. So I am going to give it an up. But my nerd wrestling side <laughs> kicked in during this match. I mean, we all understand it. Sometimes it just happens. But I really do think that we should have given Sky Blue the win here and then continue to tell whatever story we do want to tell. And then maybe even tie into Ty 2 who can be like, man, I'm so angry because I can't get a win. Well, she did get on the microphone afterwards and say, I want to fight Britt Baker on Dynamite. So now we're doing that. And if she gets there and just loses, well, this one's going to feel even more ridiculous. So I am going to give it a down just based on my gut. But does it matter? No. <laughs> Everybody's going to have forgotten about this in around about 24 hours. Like I say, sometimes it just takes over you. We then had another video showing us that AR Fox had recently defeated Shane Taylor, which was a smart thing to do, because of course Fox is going to be on Dynamite where he goes after the international title when he takes on Orange Cassidy when we had the greatest match announcement of all time. For you see, one of the other contests that was advertised for Dynamite is Park versus Gravity. And I was like, yeah, 
That dude has been mugging that guy off for ages. Now, of course, we are talking about the wrestler gravity, but don't you come into my house and tell me AEW don't know what they're doing. They do, and good. Which did lead to our big old main event, CM Punk and Darby Allen taking on Christian and Ricky Starks, and it took all of eight seconds to win me over. Could be a record. And of course, Christian was wearing the TNT title, so we've got to carry that on. And when we began the thing, Ricky Starks was like, well, you need to get in the ring. And Christian was like, no, you need to get in the ring. And because the match had officially began, the referee started to count them. I was like, look, if I get to 10, you're going to be DQ'd. Brilliant. Eventually, Ricky was like, fine, I'll do it. And as soon as he did get in there, CM Punk, obviously based off last week, hit him with the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up. This was like 32 seconds of great wrestling. This is when he also went for the GTS, but Starks tagged out and Christian fared no better either because Punk just threw him into Team of the Turnbuckle over and over again. And I actually watched this and said, I would take that feud. Maybe we should do it. Darby Allen then wanted a piece of this, so we got double dives because of course we did. 2023 Wrestling, sponsored by Dives. Which is when I cracked up. Whoops. Because the commentary team all of a sudden told us, oh my gosh, we have another match we can announce for next week's collision. And it's going to be Andrade versus Buddy Matthews in a ladder match with the mask hanging above the ring. But this means somebody in AEW management has retrieved Andrade's mask. And rather than gone, oh, Andrade, here's your belongings. They've gone, ah, oh, well, you want it, do you? Well, you're going to have to climb a ladder and grab it. Otherwise, you can flub off. I mean, it's basically Tony Khan saying you're going to have to get it from space. This is why I love pro wrestling. That is so damn silly. But also, those two in a ladder match? It's going to be crazy. By this point, two Starks and Kate had got on the same page, so they had taken over. And yeah, we saw Scorpio Sky watching on here. I don't know what that means. As was the way throughout this show, though, eventually Darby got the hot tag. and He was just doing those amazing dives onto everyone. When he tried to do it on Luchasaurus, and just went poop, and he fell on the floor. And I was like, yeah, what were you thinking? He's a dinosaur. Have you not seen Jurassic Park? I mean, Christian was able to throw him into Alan the Announce table when Ricky Starks then took over, which is when we must have got the 67th hot tag of this episode of Collision, because Punk got it, and you're not going to believe it, he ran wild. He chose big knees as his weapon of choice and for some reason was all of a sudden doing cartwheels. But as it turned out, it was actually a tribute to Bam Bam Bigelow because they were in his hometown. I thought that was quite nice. He followed up with the big elbow when he also went for the GTS and Starks was having none of that. So he reversed it into the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. So you see what he's doing. We then had this amazing false finish when Darby was speared out of midair and hit with the Rochambeau. And then when they went back to the top rope and they were kind of falling down, somehow Alan reversed that into a death drop. That rule. Punk then got the GTS on Christian on the outside when Darby was like, ha ha, now I can do the coffin drop. When Luchasaurus noticed the referee wasn't really watching and he crotched Alan on the top rope. I was like, well, that's fascinating. Dinosaurs know about that trick too? Somebody called the paleontologist. This is when Ricky went for another finisher, but Darby was actually able to reverse it into the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. But when Starks reversed that one, you can already see where this is going. The ref went one, the ref went two, and Rick looked around and he grabbed the rope again, and he got the three. I especially love this, because now Ricky Starks has remembered about the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. But CM Punk was watching, like, I can't believe he's done it. What's wrong with this guy? Indeed, CM. Indeed. And sure, once again, it felt very sports entertainment, but who the fluff cares? Sports entertainment is great. And also, when it comes to Dynamite and Collision, they do feel like very different shows. And given that we do have so much wrestling on TV, this should be priority number one. I like this main event. And it builds next week. Calm down. Up. Which brought us to the end of Collision. Ever since they did debut a few weeks ago, I think they haven't missed the mark at all. So I am going to give it an up. Let's hope all of this continues to build. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe, and click the video on the screen right now, which is ups and downs for SmackDown, so we can go on a WWE adventure, and head over to whatculture.com to check out what's going on in the wrestling world, and follow us on social media. What Culture WWE, Simon316. May not have Twitter for much longer. We shall see. My name is Simon What Culture. Thank you very much for watching me, as always. I hope you have a damn good week, and I look forward to seeing you throughout the next seven days. Take care of yourself. See you soon.